Hey guys, you have McGann the Fangirl here representing the Game Flames on the Fanily channel. And while at Gen Con, I got to do an interview with Dave Scott from Evil Genius Games. He is the owner of the company. He is such a nerd. I just love talking to him. He really knows what he's talking about and he loves it. I think you guys are gonna really like getting to know him. Hi, my name is Dave Scott and I'm the owner of Evil Genius Games, and we've created a game called Everyday Heroes. How did Evil Genius Games come about? Oh, wow. Um, it, it's sort of a funny story. Um, I'm a big fan of the legendary game designer Jeff Grubb, and I ran into him on the streets of Seattle and started to dote on him about how amazing D20 Modern was, the game that was launched based on 3.5 in 2002. And um, uh, after getting to know him, uh, I twisted his arm and convinced him that we should reboot this, the game uh, under the name of Everyday Heroes using the 5th edition, uh, fifth edition uh, rules. Uh, it took a while, it took a lot of beers, but eventually he was convinced and we assembled an amazing design team uh, to go out and rebuild this game from scratch. And what do you love most about running a game company? Oh, geez, you know, um, what is there not to love? Um, one thing I really enjoy is, is talking to the fans of the game and, and talking about some of, the, some of the, the things they like about our game and then remembering back to how we came up with that idea. Um, you know, it's fun because we had a, a lot of really amazing designers and there are a couple times where like, we had really, really fierce debates about like, mechanics and some of them made it in and some didn't make it in so it's fun when people sort of acknowledge that and go oh man what, why didn't you do this again like we almost did it got put on the chopping block you know uh, and so it's a lot of fun interacting with people who play this game and and listening to what they want to see in the next version of the game and the next cinematic adventures tell me about your sort of catalog of titles here in the short form that you can and especially the new ones I see are Highlander and Total Recall. Yes, absolutely. You can sort of see the games that we have here. So everything starts out with this lovely book right here, the Everyday Heroes book. It's about 500 pages and it has everything you need to be able to play modern role-playing games. We have over six archetypes, we've got 20 classes, um, and we have everything you need from hacker rules to chase rules uh, to modern firearms built in this book right here. This is the base that you need. But if you actually want to expand beyond that into specific cinematic environments, we have six of them. Starting over here on this side, we've got Escape from New York. Who, doesn't, who wouldn't love to be Snake Plissken? Uh, then we also have Pacific Rim where you could actually pilot your own Jaeger and go after Kaiju. In this particular scenario, you actually get to build your own uh, Jaeger from scratch and level them up while you level up yourself. Then we got the amazing Kong Skull Island. I don't know about you, but when I saw this movie, I walked out and went, that was a great D&D session. So I'm super excited that we have the ability to do this. Um, for those of you who don't know, Skull Island, everything on the island is trying to kill you. Um, and so we, we try to recreate that experience in this game. And of course, there's the mighty Kong, who is always ever present as a godlike figure, which you can actually gain sympathy from, and he can help you do certain actions with the more sympathy that you build with him. So it's a lot of fun mechanic. Then we have the crow, and what's really exciting about the crow is uh, we actually convinced the producers to go beyond just one death spirit. So now, if you die, you, you may not only be revisited by the crow, but we created a pantheon of death spirits. So we have the mastiff, the moth, the butterfly, the cat, the snake, and all of those different creatures have different reasons for bringing you back and for different purposes and causes. So you can actually run an entire team of crow um, heroes, all with different agendas and all with different superpowers. And then here at the con, we're actually releasing two new books, uh, which I'm super excited about. The first is Highlander. Oh my goodness, I, I'm just super excited about this project. Uh, because uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, but, but you know we actually have some really really fun rules in here. Uh, rules about the quickening. Uh, we got rules about uh, beheading. We have beheading uh, mechanics. Uh, we also have dueling mechanics as well because of course all of it comes down to being only one. So we're excited about that. And really, this is actually my favorite system that we've created so far, which is Total Recall. And the reason why I love Total Recall is because I watched that movie and I was like, I have so many questions. Like, Martians? Where did they come from? Where are they now? 
you know, how can you push one button and all of a sudden you, you create atmosphere for an entire planet in under three seconds? What other Martian technology exists? So we try to spend a little bit of time exploring the mystery of the Martians, uh, Martian technology. We even have a class called the Martian Gadgeteer which actually uh, his skill set is uh, acquiring Martian technology and adapting it to turn it into weapons. Uh, then we also have sort of um, mutation rules as well, because what we wanted to do is we wanted to sort of explore the idea of mutations uh, and, and sort of like Cleatio and his mind reading abilities and all this other sorts of good stuff. And so we have the ability for you to be able to take on mutations as part of your player character. Now what's nice about all these different games is that they're all 5e compatible. Uh, which actually means that you can mix and match these across your home game, as well as if you want to bring them into your D&D session or any other 5e compatible system. Um, so it's really a toolkit for whatever you want to do based on some of the most beloved movie franchises that exist today. And so you said Highlander was one of your favorite movies. Have you made your absolute favorite movie into a game yet? Oh, my goodness. Well, well, you know, listen, all, all these are, are from my childhood, uh, so that you can, see, you can sense the theme. No, there's there's a couple out there that uh, I I'm, I'm hunting down from a franchise perspective that I cannot you know if someday if I get them I will let you know that this was something that was uh, made out of love and and uh, and I, I can't wait to introduce it. And for all the aspiring game makers out there who would like to follow in similar footsteps, what was the process like for getting licensing for these movie franchises? Because I imagine it's it's not as easy as saying, hey, I'd like to make a game. It was very hard, yeah. I mean, so um, uh, it, it took a lot of education to t even teach them what this was, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we had a lot of questions like, so you're going to basically have people run around with guns? No, 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 no. In their mind, they're going to have guns. Um, and so, but once they actually got it and you were actually able to, once we were actually to talk their language, it was a lot easier to do. Um, and, uh, you know, we plan to be releasing um, a season of adventures every single year. We're working on our 2024 slate, which is a lot of fun right now. Um, and um, we just can't wait to continue to introduce more. And uh, we'd like this all to be fan driven. So if you're not on our Facebook page, Come onto our Facebook page and tell us what movies you want to see turned into cinematic adventures. And is the Facebook page just Evil Genius Games? It is, yes, slash Evil Genius Games. And I'm, I'm actually surprised. So in this day and age, there's still people and companies who have no idea what the RPG D&D kind of system is. You'd be surprised, um, you know, and I think a lot of people think uh, automatically that we're a video game company because that's what they're used to. But once they understand it, they get really excited about it. Uh, one of the, the best moments was when we were selling the producers of The Crow on the idea of making a game. And he said, yeah, I've heard about D&D, but I've and I've always wanted to play. He goes, could you run me through a game? And so we ran them. We ran them through a D&D &D game. <laughs> <laughs> just because he'd never done it before. He, he was like super psyched about it. He's like, I can't wait to play this again. So, you know, we're, we're making true believers out of everybody. That, that's amazing. Okay, and I've asked this question to everybody I've interviewed. I think it's just fun. What was your favorite game to play growing up? Oh, wow. So uh, I, was the, I was the guy that everyone hated because everyone wanted to play D&D &D and I always wanted to play modern day role playing games. So I was the person who pushed D20 Modern and everybody, Spycraft, oh, I love Spycraft back in the day, uh, and like Star Frontiers. We were just talking with my, one of my GMs about Star Frontiers and how much I love Star Frontiers uh, because um, it was just a really super simple uh, just sci-fi game, you know, where you had five alien races. One of them was like a blob type character. Um, and you had like, you know, you had a, you could pick from a laser pistol or a pulse pistol or a slug gun. And it was just, it was just, for me, that was like one of the be best experiences of my childhood. That's great. So are all of these available now? Can you tell just anybody watching from home how to get a hold of these if they want them? Yes, absolutely. So um, the season includes eight cinematic adventures. Six of them are, are released today, uh, at least as of today. The only two that are missing are Rambo and Universal Soldier, which will be available in October. But all of these should be able to be found through your friendly local gaming store or through our website, EvilGeniusGames.com. And is there anything else that you'd like people to know about Evil Genius Games or yourself or anything? Yeah, you know, uh, what, what I encourage everyone to do is feel free to check us out, you know, and uh, we're 5e compatible, so if you already know how to play D&D, 
You can learn how to play us really quickly. We have a lot of modules free that are online. You can get them through drive through or our website. So you can actually download it, read about it, try it before you buy. Uh, and I just recommend you go in and, and give this a shot because I think you're going to have a lot of fun. And then just one more plug we just announced today. Oh. Hot off the presses that we are formally launching our Urban Arcana reboot. Oh. Uh, it's going to be called Everyday Arcana, and it's going to be a big game. We're actually announcing four books, a player's guide, a GM's guide, a bestiary, and a, a, cinema, a, a scenario. And all four of them will be released at Gen Con next year. And we have helming the, helming the whole project. We have the amazing BJ Hensley, who, as you may know, just came off of running the uh, d developing the uh, Cephalofair role playing game based on Gloomhaven. I'm trying not to like interject and get too excited and geek no, out too much. <laughs> okay, anything else? Otherwise, I will I will wrap up the video part. That's it. Hope okay. To see you. If you had fun watching today's video, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see more and let us know in the comments what other videos you might want to see in the future. Also, don't forget to check out our other channel, The Fan Girl, where we talk about all kinds of movies, TV shows, and even books and comics. But viewer discretion is advised. See you next time, family members!